Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Jim from Jim Shaped Coding. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on a keyword that is called return. Now, before we jump straight on to what it does, let me write again the example from the previous episode where we created a function that prints the square of a number. So we will have def square and as a parameter, we will have the number. And right after that, we will write print number square by 2. So this is the exact function we used in episode number 25. And later on, what I want to do is just writing here the function's name. So this is how we call functions, as you remember. And we can write here 7 or we can do number equals to 7 because the names, the parameter names is number. So if we execute this one, we will get 49 back as expected. But until now, we did not do something like making this equal to a variable. So this is what I want to try out to do now and see what we get as a result. So in order to do that, we will create a variable that is called a result. And then we will try to print what it is equal to. So we will try to print result and also the print number square 2. And if I run this, in the second print, which is print result, I get back none. Now, what is going on here? The thing is, any function that is designed in any programming language is supposed to return some value back whenever the execution is finishing. So when the function reaches its last line, the function expects to return some value. And because we do not return any value in this particular example, then the interpreter says to itself, okay, so I got nothing to return back, then I will return none because I did not request to return anything. So this is where the return keyword comes in and could assign some value to a variable like this. So for example, if I remove this line from here and change it to return, pay attention that return is a keyword and not a built-in function or something. So this is wrong, all right? So what I have to do is return and then hit the spacebar. And later after that, I will just do the exact same expression as I did a minute ago. And now if I run this, I will get back 49 because now I'm actually returning a value once the function finishes its execution. Now, in this particular example, I know that we only have one line of code, but think of a situation where you want to write some complex algorithm and then you want to return some value back. Now, this is where return could be extremely powerful. So let me show you one more example what functions could include and then also the return keyword will be much clear. So let's delete the entire file and show one more example that is very important to know about the return statement. So I want to write a function that is going to check if I'm eligible to drink alcohol. So what I will write here is a function that is called can drink, all right? And as a parameter, for sure, I will call my parameter age. It makes sense. And what I want to do here is let you understand that you can include any type of code we learned until now in your functions. So what have we learned until now? We learned built-in functions and we also learned if statements, for loops, while loops, dictionaries, tuples, more built-in functions like range, um, int converter, string converter, pretty much everything. This is why functions exist, all right? For you to take some multiple lines of code and push it under some function so you will be able to reuse it. And I want to show you an example with an if statement right there. So we want to return true or false regarding if the age is more than 21 or less than 21. So what I will do is creating an if statement that is going to check if the age is more than 21 or equal to and then what I want to do, if this is true, is return true, all right? 
and sorry about that and we will write here else because I want to cover all the other cases that are not age equal or more than 21 I will return false and this is also something that you can do because it is not sure that your Python code will enter this statement alright so if it won't enter here then it will enter here because this is what if else are about and what I can do now is get out of this function and do something like eligible to drink equals to can drink and let's write here for example 25 and then if I'm going to print the variable itself which is eligible to drink then I will get back true let me show you what happens if I put here 8 in it returns me false so this is a perfect example about what else you can include in your functions but one more last point before we finish about the return statement so the return statement ends the execution of the function and returns you the result now pay attention to what I said in the beginning it ends the execution so it is very important to realize that once your Python reaches that return statement you are not allowed to write any code after the return statement because this is what return is designed for so for example if I go down here in my can drink function and try to print something like this is a function just any type of code it does not matter what you see that immediately I get that error that says to me if I just will hover here unreachable code alright so if you could read that it really writes that inspection unreachable code so this is very important that you cannot write any kind of code after the return statement so if I will try to run this the code is just being executed anything is fine but PyCharm warns you that this particular line is not going to be exec executed because of what I said right now. So this is what return statement is about. I hope you realized how functions working from now because if you do not return anything then it will return you none and if you do return actually something then you will get whatever you return back and the best practices is to store it in a variable in the future. So everyone, don't forget to crack the subscribe button and also like this video. I will see you in the next episode.